What's going on, comic book movie fans? My name is Jonathan. This is Comic Book Cinema. And today, we're going to discuss comic book movie news. So Marvel's Blade loses its director literally two months ahead of production. One of the major trades, Variety, has confirmed that Bassam Tariq has left the role of director in the Blade movie. And this also spells doom for all the movies that were scheduled to come out after Blade, as everything in the MCU is interconnected, right? And certain movies cannot come out before other films, especially if they were scheduled to be after that film chronologically. So this has created a giant mess over at the MCU. Some have even compared this to the disastrous efforts that we've seen in the past from DC and Warner Brothers. It was said that Tariq's departure kind of came as a shock. Production was literally set to begin in November. And it's also said that, rightfully so, Mahershala Ali, the actor that was selected to play the new iteration of Blade in the MCU, is upset and frustrated. I mean, how long has it been since they made the announcement that he was going to be our new Blade... And this film was coming out years in advance. It was at least two years ago. I'm not saying creating a script for an iconic film like a rebooted Blade is easy by any means, but come on guys. These guys had plenty of time to craft a good script. So let's just take a look at how this director leaving the Blade film has affected the entirety of the MCU. First off with Blade, Blade was supposed to come out November the 3rd, 2023, now it's been delayed almost an entire year to September the 6th, 2024. And this has created a ripple effect, like I alluded to earlier in the video. Deadpool 3, we saw slightly less of a move here from September the 6th, 2024 to November the 8th, 2024. Fantastic Four got shifted from November the 8th, 2024, all the way to February 2025. Some of those untitled Marvel films we're not going to really discuss in detail, but those release dates have been moved back as well. And the first Avengers film that we would have gotten in five plus years, Avengers Secret Wars, has been delayed from November the 7th, 2025 to May the 1st, 2026. So it's kind of that old analogy, living and dying by the sword, right? Every film and show in the MCU is interconnected and woven very tightly. And that's the thing. When you have an issue like this that pops up, it affects every single film that comes out afterwards. Hopefully, we won't be seeing any more delays in the near future for the MCU. I don't want to have to wait until I'm 57 to see the newest Avengers film. So now Marvel's Armor Wars has went from being a Disney Plus show to a live action movie. In some of the articles, it was worded that it was redeveloped as a feature film, but trust me, that's not the case. This was already shaping up to be a little more cinematic than they were expecting, I'm sure. So probably a lot of the executives, including the almighty Kevin Feige, looked at each other and were like, you know what, we should release this in theaters. This is really good. So obviously Don Cheadle's playing War Machine in this film, and Yasir Lester, who was acting as the head writer for this show, stays on for the film, but as the main scribe. But as far as a director, we don't know anything yet for sure. And the basic premise for Iron Wars is Tony Stark's technology falling into the wrong hands, which we've already seen a bit of in the MCU thus far. So there were some rumors going around that we would actually see Justin Hammer return in this feature film, as well as the White Vision. If I were a betting man and I had to choose between one of those two rumors, I think the far safer bet would be us seeing the White Vision return in this film, However, I would not exclude Justin Hammer from coming back. We've already seen a lot of that in the MCU as of late. Characters that were introduced in 2008, 2009, returning in the She-Hulk series, returning in Black Widow, returning in Civil War. So this would not be anything new. And I think that Justin Hammer is very beloved in the community. So seeing him come back in this film would be legendary. Who do you think is going to pop up in the Armor Wars? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button, right? So here's a bit of news that has actually been confirmed. And it seems like some people are very far on the right of this and some people are very far on the left of this. Honestly, I'm kind of just unopposed, I guess, either way. Harrison Ford has been officially cast as Thunderbolt Ross. 
If anything, I think they could have casted just a little bit younger. Harrison Ford is 80 years old, and he could be around longer than you and I. Who knows? But if you were going to go that old, I honestly think Sam Elliott would have been a better option for the character, especially since we've seen him play that character before in the first Hulk movie that came out in 2003. He's got the look. He's got the voice. He's got the stash. But honestly, I think they could have won a, at least 20 to 25 years younger for that character. But like I said, I'm not opposed to it. I think that Harrison Ford's a great actor. He's been in lots of iconic films in the past. So it'll be cool to see him pop up as this character, which it will be very likely that we will see Harrison Ford as the Red Hulk, which is absolutely nuts. And ladies and gentlemen, my dream come true. It has been confirmed by The Rock that we will be seeing Henry Cavill in some capacity return as Superman in the upcoming Black Adam film. I don't think that it's any secret on this channel that Superman is my all-time favorite superhero and Henry Cavill is my favorite actor to play the role. So recently on a late night show, Dwayne The Rock Johnson made the comments that Black Adam is the strongest being in the world, but Superman is the strongest being in the universe. I love that. I love the fact that we're going to see Superman and he's going to get the respect that he deserves. And it's going to be so epic to see Henry Cavill's Superman go one on one with the great one, if you will. No, but seriously, to see them two collide on the big screen is going to be epic. And honestly, I think here in the Black Adam film, rightfully so, they should focus more on the character of Black Adam. More than likely, we're going to get Henry Cavill's return here, but I think it probably, if anything, will be a cameo in the film. More than likely, it will be a post credit scene that alludes to those two fighting in the near future. And everyone knows that Superman doesn't have many weaknesses other than kryptonite, but magic is certainly one of his weaknesses, and Black Adam is definitely a magic wielder. So either way, no matter how you slice it, this is so exciting. It's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be a comic book movie fan. Make sure you check us out on TikTok and Instagram at Real Comic Book Cinema, and you can also find us on Facebook. Until next time, have a good one.